Here's problem 1018. Particles, mass each 0.4 kilograms, are placed at the 60 centimeter and 100 centimeter marks of a meter stick of negligible mass. This rigid body is free to rotate about a frictionless pivot at the 0 centimeter end. The body is released from rest in the horizontal position. What is the magnitude of the initial linear acceleration of the end of the body opposite the pivot? So let's imagine how this looks. We've got a meter stick horizontally free to rotate about a pivot at its left end. And we have masses, one located at 0.6 meters and the other one located at the end of the meter stick at one meter and so there's going to be forces on these masses there will be an mg on this this first mass and since they're the same mass there will be an mg on the second mass as well so these forces are going to supply torques alright if we want to calculate the torques on this body the actual net torque on this body will be the summation of each of these forces multiplied by their respective moment arms. So I could write this as force 1 times moment arm 1 plus force 2 times moment arm 2. And in this case that would be M1G moment arm 1 plus M2G moment arm 2. M1 is uh, 0.4 kilograms. G is 9.8. And D1 is this distance here from the pivot and that's equal to 0.6 meters so we put in 0.6 here mass 2 is 0.4 kilograms and G is 9.8 and D2 is this distance from the pivot which is 1 meter so Calculating these torques, 0 0.4 times 9.8 times 0 0.6 plus 0.4 times 9.8 is 6.27 newton meters. Now that's the magnitude of the torque. Since it's actually going uh, clockwise, that would actually would be a negative torque. But let's just think about it in terms of magnitude. So that's the magnitude of the torque on this meter stick. We want to relate this to the torque in the form of moment of inertia times angular acceleration because we need to find the angular acceleration before we can find the linear acceleration at the end of the rod. Now in order to use this we need to find the moment of inertia. So let's kind of take a side step here. Moment of inertia would be equal to the summation of every mass multiplied by its distance from the axis of rotation squared. And in this case, that would be mass 1, distance 1 squared, plus mass 2, distance 2 squared. And that would be 0.4 times 0.6 squared. In this case, the r ha happens to be equal to the same as d, plus 0.4 times 1 squared. And that should give us our moment of inertia. 0.4 times 0.6 squared plus 0.4 times 1 squared is 0.544 0 0.544 kilogram meter squared. Alright, so that is our moment of inertia. So, we have a net torque that is equal to 6.27 newton meters. We have a moment of inertia that is equal to 0.544 kilogram meters squared. And we know that uh, net torque should equal moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. So our angular acceleration for this rigid body will equal the net torque 
divide by the moment of inertia. 6.27 divided by 0.544 will give us an angular acceleration of what? 11.53 radians per second squared. This is all fine and dandy, nice to know, but the question was, what's the linear acceleration at the end of the rod? Well, we need to use a linear to angle conversion or vice versa. In other words, our linear acceleration will equal the angular acceleration times the radius to that point. And so, in this case, our linear acceleration will equal 11.53 radians per second squared and our radius to the end of the rod, the rod being a meter stick from the pivot, is indeed the length of the meter, so r is equal to one meter, and hence, in this case, our r is just one. So we're going to end up with a linear acceleration of that end of 11.53 meters per second squared. So the linear acceleration of the end of this rod is actually greater than the acceleration of gravity. It is 11.53 meters per second squared. And that is our answer.